it's tough to choose. Honestly, yeah. they're all so perfect. Uh, I'm pers- I'm a season four man. I'm just gonna say, uh, <laughs> yeah, season four was the shit. That is the that, I think that's that is the, the very- greatest season of a dramatic television ever. Whoa. Now, I would not be the first to say The Wire is a masterpiece. However, one of the big things that stands out for it is, in my opinion, season four, which I think is the best season of TV ever. But first off, why? And that is the opening scene. First off, the opening scene... Now, every season of The Wire focuses on something. The first season focuses on the drug trade. The second focuses on the port system. The third, the city government. And the fourth, the school system. And David Simon, series creator, said that each system could represent some sort of Greek god. As Simon has stated, the show was like a Greek tragedy, which this season certainly is. The opening scene focuses on Snoop. It's a very funny scene about Snoop, a hardened criminal, interacting with a hardware store employee. That saying of tiny ass 22 world knows drop the nigga plenty of days, man. Motherfuckers get up, man, you like a pinball, rip your ass up. Big joints, though, big joints, man, just break a bone, you just say fuck it. But in reality, the opening scene is really setting up the main theme of the season, the schooling system. And shows how the poorer people in Baltimore can be educated, but are also usually educated via guns. And she's also buying a nail gun, which will be used throughout the season when she meets Chris. She repeats everything the man told her to Chris, suggesting anybody can learn in the right circumstances. Yours, this is gunpowder activated, 27 caliber, full auto, no kickback, nail thorn mayhem, man. Next is, of course, the schooling story which follows a group of four young boys, Michael, Dookie, Randy and Naaman, all of which are affected by the drug scene, as Dookie's parents are drug addicts, and thus he can barely eat. Naaman, whose mother, forces him to be a corner boy, despite not being good at it, and his dad, Weebay Price, staying in prison. Randy, whose dad is Cheese, another drug dealer, the two never even interacting with each other, and Michael, whose mum is also a drug addict. And his stepdad, who before going to prison, is hinted at that he sexually abused Michael. And each character, despite this, is shown to have some sort of intelligence. Michael is a great leader and great at boxing. Randy is a smart businessman. Dookie is good with computers and named is eventually shown to be a great speaker. And we see each of these respectable guys, which is noticed by four characters. In particular, Prez, Bunny Colvin, Cutty. And Carver. Now, each of these four characters is set to redeem each other in some way. Bunny, after he made Hamsterdam, which, while well, affected, was against the law, and wants to help the school children, specifically the class clown types. Cutty, after realizing the game wasn't in him anymore, has set up a boxing gym, which he helps troubled youths and sees potential in Michael, even taking him to a boxing match. Carver is shown to be a terrible police officer in the first few seasons, but is eventually able to become a trustworthy and even having some sort of relationship with the streets, like Bodhi and his crew. And then we get to Prez, who has one of not just The Wire's greatest arcs, but one of TV's best. Now, throughout the first seasons, Prez is shown as one of the show's most annoying and dislikable characters. When he eventually decides to become a teacher, at first it does not go well. And there is eventually even a serious incident, which he mishandles very much. But eventually, he grows a close relationship to his students by using their experiences on the streets for teaching. I mean, does dice have eyes too? Because mostly that's what we play. Dice? Yeah, sure. So can you show us the eyes of dice? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, Yeah, nice. Happy for you. Happy (laughs) hard, man. For real. And grows close with Dookie giving him lunch, clothes, and allowing him to shower in school every morning. And the reason this is done so well is due to co-writer Ed Burns, being a former teacher himself, and thus the realistic aspect of it. Now each of these four kids are tragic in multiple ways, but the two this season focuses on the most is Michael and Randy. Now Randy is shown to be a businessman, selling sweets to kids and making tons of money, even looking out for his friends while they have some fun, if you will. And Randy meets little Kevin, who is part of Bodie's crew, where he tells him... Tell him Patrice said he should come to the playground after eight. Why don't you tell him yourself? Look, dog, I don't want to take another Bodie shit today about cutting work. All right, just do me that. He does so, and is eventually told by little Kevin that Lex was killed, by Chris and Snoop. And when he gets accused of not stopping a rape, he snitches and says... 
know about a murder. I do. This eventually leads to him getting into a fight and beating up. And they talk to Prez about it, who knows that Randy is screwed. He confronts Carver due to him being ordered to protect Randy, which he does not do, where he eventually meets Randy, whose house is then eventually firebombed. He meets Randy in the hospital in one of the show's best acted and probably the most emotional scene of the series, or at least season four. Oh, huh? You gonna look out for me? You gonna look out for me, Sergeant Carver? You mean it? You gonna look out for me? You promise? He tries to adopt Randy but is not allowed and Randy is eventually put into a foster home where he, he is beaten up. And of course Michael. Now it's shown that Marlow and his crew like Michael. Now Michael is shown to be a very good boxer who cut he likes. However after his stepdad comes back he eventually asks Chris to kill him which he does so in brutal fashion. And eventually, after Cutty comes to Michael's corner, he apologises to him, but Cutty is then shot in the leg. And by the final episode, Michael joins Marlow, and is now a fully-fledged member of Marlow's crew. Now, the two more things I want like to cover in this video, as I do not think everything can be covered due to how dense the show is with dialogue and small moments. Those two things are Bodhi vs Marlow and McNulty. Now in this season it's become very obvious that Bodhi is going to have a confrontation with Marlow or his crew in some way. Now Bodhi has a conversation with Put where they talk about global warming and eventually they talk with little Kevin where Bodhi gives little Kevin terrible advice. Yeah well, I ain't the one you need to convince. Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock. Why well, I gotta convince him? You know what I'm saying yo, Popo come asking about you, they snatch your ass up. You out of pocket for a few days? <laughs> oh yeah, he'll definitely hear about it. And leaves Kevin to be talking with Marlo, in which he's taken away and killed in a haunting visual. And this scene shows just how ruthless Marlo is compared to Stringer, Bell and Avon, showing us how it can get much worse. And I've got a video on Marlo Stanfield so I won't talk about him much, other than he, that he is a great villain. Later on Slim talks to the body and Put, where he eventually tells Bodhi about Kevin, where we see a guilt-ridden Bodhi angry at himself. They eventually go to the crime scene where Bodhi kicks out a window and is arrested but they let go. He's let go where he goes for lunch with McNulty but is spotted by one of Marlow's guys. While having lunch, Bodhi talks about how long he's been a shoulder where he says, This game is rigged man. We like the little bitches on the chessboard. Pawns. And says to McNulty, somebody has got to stop Marlow. At night time, Bodhi spots Chris and Snoop approaching him, where he eventually pulls his gun out and begins firing. Put flees, and Old Dog comes out of nowhere, and then. Now the way this scene is set up is to be the conclusion of the chess metaphor. Night takes pun. And now Marlow has truly won. Now finally McNulty is a very controversial character in that he is either loved or hated. Now he is not in this season very much, only in small doses, due to Dominic West getting homesick. However, due to his limited schedule, they were able to make him much more likeable. Via his relationship with Omar and the corner with Body who he interacts with on multiple occasions. And his character arc seems to be complete, as now he is likeable and not ruining any investigations. However, he eventually finds out about Bodhi's death. Midnight shift, got it. Check the Sergeant, get your ass in here! And McNulty's character 
has straight away gone from a fall and rise story to a rise and fall story, and McNulty asks for a transfer to take down Marlow and his crew. Now, there is much more in this season, but I hope I made my case for this being the best season of all time. The writing, the best it's ever been, detailed and dense, and not boring, the acting terrific, the season is an emotional roller coaster, and so much more, that it just has to be watched, but all in all, a masterpiece.